Hey, Side here. Um, in my previous video, I showed you how we can use uh, Sidewaffle Creator 2017 to create a simple project template uh, for Visual Studio 2017. <clears throat> um, in this video, I'm going to kind of explain what's happening behind the scenes and uh, give you some kind of more information about how this can be customized uh, and just kind of give you a better sense for what's happening uh, in, in this entire process. Um, <clears throat> in this instance of Visual Studio, I've already installed uh, Sidewaffle Creator 2017. Um, I've got my console app, which I'm going to use as a template here, uh, already set up. Uh, and I've also got my template pack project here already set up. And, uh, you know, I've already covered uh, everything about how to get to this step in my previous video. Okay, so now um, I want to take a look at, I want to kind of e explain what's happening when we build uh, the V6 project. So first, let's go ahead and build this guy. <coughs> All right, so when the V6 project uh, builds, it's essentially going to do uh, two things. It's going to create a NuGet package, and that NuGet package will have the contents of your template. Uh, and then that, that NuGet package will go into the V6, which is generated. <clears throat> and then what it will do is uh, it'll discover uh, any VS template files uh, which are in your source root and then create a zip file out of that and then put it in the appropriate location uh, inside the v6 as well. So let me explain how that process works. Uh, this v6 project is really just a, a stock v6 project from Visual Studio uh, with some additional content included inside of it. All right, so the, the additional content it has, um, it, it's got this template pack uh, package def file. Uh, so this file, <coughs> this file is a pointer to the template engine that says, look for templates in the install directory of this extension. Uh, so that's what this item does, install path equals package folder. And then uh, there's just a unique uh, tree, there's just a unique uh, folder name here under template engine templates. Uh, you shouldn't have to mess with this file. It should be uh, ready to go. Uh, one note is, if this if this string is not uh, unique, then you might have problems. You should make it unique. Um, if you're using the latest build of Sidewaffle Creator, you should be fine here. All right, so that was that. Um, and then let's take a look at this uh, source manifest. So inside this file, uh, an item which has been customized is the, the assets tag here. So we can see... Uh, the source manifest says, look for project templates in the v6 under output templates. Okay, that's where template, that's where the Waffle Builder will put all your templates, is in output templates in the v6. All right, so that was that. And then we have a, a template pack.proj file under uh, the template folder. This file is responsible for building the, the NuGet package, um, and then uh, if you plan on releasing this, um, if you plan on releasing your templates on NuGet.org uh, or any other NuGet repository, then you should go in and fill some metadata here about your package. Uh, and then I've got some kind of placeholders here, author, description, version. Uh, there's some other stuff you can set in here too. Um, if you're not able to find what you're looking for, uh, let me know and I can help you with that. <coughs> Uh, the other item that's important, um, there's two other items. One is template source root, and uh, this, this property here itself is actually ignored here, so uh, let me explain how this works. So let me open the uh, solution folder. So we have a convention for how are we going to locate uh, the, uh, the content which should go inside the NuGet package. All right, so this is my v6 project. So my v6 project is sitting here. Uh, the convention is we will go up one folder from the v6 and grab everything that's inside this folder uh, and put it in the NuGet package, um, excluding items that are listed here. So exclude from package. So um, if your NuGet package uh, has extra files going inside of it that you need to exclude, uh, you can extend, uh, you can add uh, additional exclude from package items uh, listed here to basically exclude additional items. So it'll pick up everything that's in the, in the source root minus these things. 
Um, if your solution doesn't use uh, that same type of convention, if the convention of go up one folder from the v6 doesn't work for you, then what you should do is you should create a property called template source root um, in the actual project itself. So let me show you this real quick. So in the v6 project, you would unload and then you'll edit. And then towards the bottom, uh, before this guy, before the waffle builder target section, we want to create a new property group and then set template source root to uh, whatever you might need to set. Let's say you're going to go up two folders um, and then that'll be your source root or wherever it is that your, your sources are going to be rooted at, you should set that here. Okay, I'm not going to do that for, uh, for this project because I've got everything uh, in the right spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this guy. And um, yeah, and then uh, I guess before I, um, I move on, we can see that it imports a, uh, a, a targets file from the project itself. Let me close out of this and reload. So that targets file is sitting down here, wafflebuilder.targets. Um, uh, you should not modify this uh, file itself. If, if for some reason you think you need to modify this, contact me and um, I'll help you work around that. But uh, you shouldn't be modifying this file itself. It should just sit there. All right, so now let me go ahead and build. I've, I've actually already built this project just a few minutes back. So now let's take a look at the, the output. So I've got the V6 and uh, this is the item that you would use to actually ship it into uh, the Visual Studio Marketplace. So let's take a look at what's inside this file. All right, I'm just going to open this with uh, 7-zip. <clears throat> we can see here's that NuGet package. I can drill into that. All right, so NuGet package, uh, everything should be inside content. So now we can see I've got um, both of the folders which are uh, in my root here, my console and then v6 project. Okay, so my console um, and then we have all the, the normal stuff here. Um, okay, so that's basically uh, the NuGet package content has the right files that we want, so that's good. <coughs> and then let's look inside output here. So uh, we saw in the v6 uh, the source manifest that it said to look for templates and output templates. All right, and then um, what happens after this is going to be reflected in the nodes under new project dialog. So <clears throat> wherever the zip file shows up under output templates, that's going to be the, the hierarchy and new project dialog. So C sharp, console, side waffle, uh, template.zip. So now this zip file will show up as a template and new project dialog under C sharp, console, side waffle. And then let's drill into this. Uh, so here we can see I've got the template.json and VS template file. Let me go back to my solution. And uh, if you remember correctly, uh, when you right clicked on your project and said create template, it created a, a template config folder with template.json and then VS template. So uh, we can see those two items are, uh, those two files are reflected here. And then we've got a project icon. <coughs> If I was to take a look at this, we can see it's just the default icon uh, that comes with Sidewaffle itself. Okay, that can be customized, and I'll show you how to customize that here in a second. <clears throat> um, but before I do that, let me go into the VS template and explain um, what's happening here. Okay, so I've got that file open. Uh, let's take a look. Let me actually unpin this. All right, so here... Uh, this the 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 contents of this file relate to uh, what are what is going to be shown in the new project dialog, and then how does that run? <clears throat> um, so you want to make sure that you've got this metadata set up correctly, because this stuff is going to be what's actually shown on the new project dialog. And then we can see here I've got the reference to that project icon file. Okay, and then. Um, the, basically, the way that this works is there's a wizard that's created by Microsoft, uh, by my team at Microsoft, uh, that actually drives this entire process. Uh, and then that's this wizard here, which I've kind of highlighted, uh, the template engine wizard. So when a user uh, sees your new item, uh, your project inside the new project dialog and clicks OK, uh, this wizard is called, and then all the custom parameters will be sent to it. 
one special custom parameter that we have here is sidewall fold new project node and this is what kind of determines that path uh, C sharp console sidewall full. If you customize this then it will show up in a different path uh, in the new project dialog. <coughs> Uh, the wizard will be passed all these parameters, but it will not actually use this parameter. This parameter is just used at build time to figure out where the zip file should go into the v6. All right. Now, with, now the template engine will use these three parameters and any other parameters that you send in to determine which uh, template to actually uh, create an instance out of. So let's take a look at what does this mean. Uh, so dollar sign language equals C sharp. So if I go into my template.json file, that says uh, look for a template that has language set to C sharp. And then uh, UI style equals none. Uh, this one I'm not going to get into any details for now. Uh, you should always set this to UI style equals none. Uh, and then there are some other options we'll get to it later uh, in a future video. And then group ID, it says now, uh, so find a, find a template that says language equals C-sharp and group identity is set to syedha.template. So if I go here, I can see group identity is syedha.template. Um, and you can put additional uh, parameters here to kind of make it more unique to find the right template. Uh, but that's the basic approach. So all the parameters will be sent uh, to this custom wizard and then this wizard will figure out which one to create a new instance of and then actually invoke that guy. So that's kind of how that works. Um, so now let me show you what would I need to do if I wanted to create a, uh, a template pack that had more than one project template. So what I'm going to do is just right click and say add new project. Um, and in your case you'll probably pick a existing project uh, that you already have. Um, but for this, I'll just say my class library, and then I'll click OK. All right, so we've did that, we've done that, and now I'm going to go ahead and right click and say create template, uh, and then fill out the information like we did before. All right, let me fill out this information here real quick. All right. click OK here. And then uh, there was one kind of workaround that I, ne that I need to do here uh, that I talked about more, and that's to add a C and D comment here. Okay, and this, this is needed right now uh, inside M any MS build file. Uh, it says just don't uh, process any conditions inside this file. Uh, if you don't put this here, then some elements may actually disappear uh, when the project is generated. Uh, for example, this whole group uh, might not appear uh, when the project is created due to these conditions here. Uh, so go ahead and set that for every project. So we've done that. Let me reload. And then let me just close out of all these uh, files here. Alright, so now if I double check, I've got my template config with the template.json and then the VS template. Um, and then it's sitting in the right location as well, uh, based on that convention that we talked about before. So now I know it will get picked up uh, in the NuGet package. So let me right click and go ahead and rebuild this project and we'll take a look at the output one more time. So I'll go into V6 project, bin, uh, debug, and then wait for the build to finish. All right, so now it's finished, and let's take a look to double check that it's got the right items. So the NuGet package now should contain uh, that additional project, which it does, so my class lib. And then if I were to go back up, I can verify that I also have an additional zip file here. Okay, yeah, and I, I left the, uh, the default there. I forgot to change web to class library, but that's fine. Now I can see I've got my template zip file here, and then it's got those two, those two files that we expected. All right, so before I test it, let me go through. I want to customize the icon, and I have a icon here that I can use, so let me copy that. And I'll paste it here, and then also I'll paste it in my console app. So template.config, 
I'll paste that. Okay, and then uh, we're pretty much good to go. So what I'll do is I'll control F5 this to go into the experimental instance, and then we'll see if our templates show up. So we should have one template show up in C Sharp, Console, Sidewaffle, and that'll be the Console project. And then we'll have another template show up in C Sharp, Web, Sidewaffle, and then that will be the uh, class library template, which we just did. So let's take a look. So I've got File, New Project here. All right, so under web, we've got Syed console. We can see if it's got my customized icon there. And then under console, we can see it's got my customized icon there as well. And then here's the d description stuff that I was telling you about to make sure that you've got all these uh, set correctly. Okay, so um, I could create this, but there's not really much interesting uh, there, interesting thing there. Let me go ahead and close out of this. Um, one thing I want to let you know of is if you ever have problems when you do Control F5 or F5 using the experimental instance, uh, if you have any problems with that experience or if you think you might be running into a bug, uh, the very first thing you should do is reset the experimental, in experimental instance. The way you're going to do that is close all of your uh, VS instances and then in the uh, start menu, search for reset. And then, uh, so you'll find reset the Visual Studio 2017 experimental instance. And then run that as an administrator. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. So if you ever have any problems, the first thing you should do is reset the experimental instance and then rerun your, uh, rerun your test. So let me open my solution one more time. Uh, my console app, I think this was the one. Actually, maybe not, but let's take a look. So uh, that was pretty much what I wanted to show you for this video. Um, actually, let me make one more note here. So uh, the way that this works is when the V6 project is built, it will actually look for any file under a template called template pack star.proj to generate the NuGet package. Um, so if you wanted to create a v6, uh, let's, say, let's say you wanted to create a template pack that consisted of multiple different NuGet packages, uh, and you're shipping these NuGet packages on NuGet.org, and then you wanted to create a VS template, uh, template pack for that, the way that you would do it is to create more files that, that, meet, that, naming, that meet that naming pattern. Uh, so, for example, you can create template pack one proj or template pack uh, admin proj or however you had them separated. As long as it meets the naming pattern template pack star proj, uh, the waffle builder will find it and then and then call it to actually generate the NuGet package and then put the NuGet package into the into the zip file. Um, and it doesn't matter what NuGet package contains the content of your template, as long as um, there's no templates duplicated across NuGet packages. Um, so in that scenario, what you'll do is uh, you'll have to customize uh, exclude from package, uh, and then you'll probably also have to customize uh, template source root uh, to make sure that you've got the right stuff getting into each one of those packages. So that's kind of the flow there. <clears throat> All right, well, this video was just to give you guys kind of an overview of uh, how Sidewaffle Creator 2017 works and give you a little bit more details and also how you can customize that project icon. Um, there's still, we're still just kind of scratching the surface here. There's going to be a lot more, there's a lot more that you can do with this that we need to cover in future videos. Um, I'm planning on making like a series of videos here for templates. Um, if you have any specific ideas that you'd like to see in a video, let me know as a comment here. Uh, and if you run into any problems, just open up a issue uh, in GitHub, and then we'll go from there. All right, thank you.